Hey, welcome back to GoFilmReviews.com, Film Reviews YouTube channel, and myself uh, as we prevent you with my movie haul for January of 2022. A little bit of a smaller one here. Remember when I told you guys last month I said I bought a lot of movies uh, in November. I had to play a lot of catch up in October. There's a lot of movies coming in and out. I'm really trying hard in 2022 to buy a little bit less uh, and and watch the stuff I have. Uh, so I've got this weird kind of thing now where I like every month I'm trying to watch one movie from every letter of the alphabet from my massive pile of to watch. Just kind of creates a little bit more of a fun kind of searching out game. Uh, and that's that's kind of what I've been doing there. So I've been trying to get through the movies that I actually own before I buy any more uh, crap to add to my pile. So most of what I've been buying has just been like stuff that I can immediately turn around and rewatch. So. That's kind of the deal. That's a long way of saying I bought a few movies fewer this time around, um, and without any like major sales, you just you kind of wait until you you get a good one. So I only got five things for you this week, um, but I think they're five worthy additions to my collection, and we're going to talk about them now. All right, so let's start off with I think this is the first one. So my first thing added to the collection this month is Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. This is the 4K. Um, this was my favorite movie of last year. Um, I don't usually pick uh, uh, like Marvel has has not been in my my favorite movie of the year discussion since Thor back in 2011. So this one really worked for me, and upon rewatch, I still adore this movie. Um, yeah, I actually picked it up for Christmas um, because I was going to have uh, my extended family around, and we thought, hey, this might keep the kids busy. The kids didn't watch it. They both already seen the movie. They loved it. But you know what? I, I wanted to have this movie, so I think that was probably why I came up with that excuse. Shang-Chi and, Shang and the Legend of the Ten Rings, my favorite movie of last year. Um, nothing more to say about it than that. I, just, I adored the movie so much, and I think it's the best Marvel movie to come out in a while. I think it's one of the best origin uh, stories in, M in the MCU. And as I talked about it during my top ten, like Spectacle kind of won me over this year. There's a lot of Spectacle-driven movies that I just really adored because it was nice to be back in the theater, and that was one of them. Up next, I had another little upgrade that took place. This was, uh, I, I think I actually ordered this during the last time I was talking about my movie haul, but it hadn't arrived yet. And uh, that was the Cornetto Trilogy on 4K, Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, and uh, The World's End. I own all these movies already. I just wanted to get an upgrade on them. I don't even have a 4K player, but I, I, you know, I have like, they came with Blu-rays. So they were also a upgrade to Blu-ray for now and an upgrade to 4K eventually when I get a 4K player. I love all three of these movies. I, I'm a little bit more partial to Shaun of the Dead. Um, Hot Fuzz is like a close second. World's End is a pretty good one as well. It's not as good as the other two, but all three of these movies are very, very funny. Uh, I know that their trilogy has come to an end, but part of me will always want to see another film with Edgar Wright directing, Simon Pegg co-writing and starring, and Nick Frost co-starring with him. Uh, they just have a tremendous energy, those three performers, uh, in the way that they utilize their movies. 4K editions in all three of them. Expect to see an unboxing of video for this um, because I've, I've not had the chance to find out if it's it is an actual collector's edition set or is it just they pop the disc into a box and that's what you're getting. Either way, um, better presentation than the current copies I have, so I picked out those. I wanted to get free shipping with the Cornetto Trilogy, so I added a $5 movie to the bin and this was one that even though I have Shudder and I can watch whenever I want, I, I chose to uh, get a physical edition of Host. Uh, this is from 2020. Um, the movie actually, I think, runs like 55 minutes or an hour. It's a very short movie, uh, shot entirely during lockdown in 2020. Entirely, I guess you could call it found footage, it's screen grab or whatever it is. This is a great little horror movie, though, that I enjoyed the first time I watched it, and I enjoyed watching it again when this copy arrived really really great little scary movie tense sequence uh there's always there's this kind of discussion can they do a second one and it's like i don't i don't know that you need to it's, the story is pretty cut and dry beginning to end host on blu-ray if you haven't had a chance to check this out it is streaming on shutter it's a shutter original so i would assume it's going to stay on there uh check that one out it's fantastic uh next up on the list so this is a movie that ended up making my top 10 of the year it was the last movie from 2021 that i think i saw and it pushed, it knocked the movie Nobody off my top 10. And that is uh, Nia DaCosta's Candyman. Uh, Candyman from last year. Jordan Peele, co-writer and producer. 
um, starring Yahya Abdul-Mateen and Coleman Domingo, who is the best working actor right now, I, top five at least. Coleman Domingo is great, and he's in this movie. So I had a feeling I was going to love this movie. I, I just had like a, a inclination. I'm a big fan of the original Candyman. Um, the reason why I didn't see this one in theaters is I'm kind of a completionist, and I had to see. I wanted to see Candyman: Farewell to the Flesh and Day of the Dead. Uh, the two sequels to the original film, even though they're not referenced in any way in this film, and I knew that going in. I was like, I still want to see the other movies before I watch this one. So one day, at the end of December, I watched uh, the original Candyman, I watched Farewell from the, to the Flesh, I watched Day of the Dead, and I ran out and picked up the 4K of the new film Candyman. And this is actually my favorite one of all four of them. Um, I think it's fantastic. I, I can't understand the people that are like saying this movie is too woke. Uh, Candyman is woke. Uh, <laughs> Candyman is al has always been about race. It's always been about race. Maybe the story by Clive Barker originally was not about race, but the movies have always been about race. Um, that's part of it. So if you think it's too woke, you probably should rewatch the other movies. Uh, you might find that uh, something about it has changed, or maybe something about you has changed. Um, but beyond all that, Candyman, if you don't even look at anything outside of it and just look at it as a horror film, this new movie is great. Um, it's it's visually stunning. Performances across the board are great. Um, it, it's everything about it works really well. So yeah, it made my top ten of the year. The other mainstay horror movie that made my top ten of the year that everyone kind of gives me crap about is this one right here, Halloween Kills. This is the 4K extended cut of Halloween Kills. This is my maybe my favorite Halloween movie since the original. I can't say for certain. I think that's how it sits on my ranking right now. But I, I adore Halloween Kills. I think it makes Halloween 2018 better. I think it makes the original film better. Not that the original film needed to get much better, but it adds some stuff that makes the bridging of those two movies really well and bridges into this one. This is the first time I really felt Haddonfield as a town has a character. Uh, there are people that show up in, I don't even want to say cameo, but like extras in the 2018 Halloween that get characters in this film. So like you see little people in the background of that movie that end up in this movie and it just feels like this was a plan like it feels planned out even though I don't think it was I think the idea was there but this movie feels planned out it feels like there was a, a notable reason to have it um, we might say something different after Halloween ends come out we may I may turn around and be like wow what a piece of garbage but I really really like this movie I have a couple nitpicks in terms of the ending um, and and maybe the repetition of the evil dies tonight thing I don't mind the mob mentality idea that comes to play with the movie I think it's Fantastic. Um, there's a couple of repetition things with the evil dies tonight thing. Maybe it takes a little, it happens maybe too often where it feels like feels shoehorned. But those are nitpicks. Um, and I wanted to see the extended cut because I heard it had an alternate ending. It has more than anything an extended ending. It has the original written ending, uh, which tacks on just one extra scene to the end of the movie. It's not it's not like insanely lo longer. How much longer is the movie? Four minutes of extended scenes, added scenes. I couldn't honestly tell you what the ads are other than that last tacked on piece to the ending, but I really love this movie. Um, I bought it and immediately the next morning woke up at like six in the morning so I could watch it. I was that excited to see this movie. Um, I really wish my wife was a Halloween fan because I think she would like this one in 2018, but she she's not a fan. She likes the Rob Zombie movies, but that's about it. Um, so there you have it. Those are the five things I picked up recently. Uh, in my movie haul. You're probably going to see a couple of these shorter videos. I think anytime I get like five in, in a given month, I'll, I'll just kind of carry over what I have until I've got five at the end of a month to talk about. Um, those are the five I've got. Uh, I've got some things on order, so hopefully you'll see another one of these soon. I, I made, some, made some monetary mistakes this month uh, that may come to fruition next month. So maybe you'll see an upcoming video this soon. While you're at the channel here, please give us a like. Please uh, comment with your thoughts on any of these movies that I picked up during my movie haul. Do you have copies of them? Do you uh, love them? Do you hate them? What do you think about them? And while you're down there too, click subscribe. It doesn't hurt you. You get more content that way. You get to check out all the videos I've got here, uh, spend some time hanging out, and uh, we can continue to build a, a great community of people on this website. Uh, I really do appreciate that. Uh, you can check out all my film reviews. I've got over a thousand of them at GoFilmReviews.com. And uh, you can also check out my sibling show, Kyle and the Cunt Film. The link's down in the description as well. We have new episodes of our show every Monday, Thursday, and Saturday. Three times a week you get new episodes of that show uh, where we, myself and Nick Plotichuk from the St. Paul Filmcast, get together and talk about uh, a particular movie and just break it down from beginning to end. Nice little short, sweet 20 to 30 minute episodes where you can 
kind of go and butt heads with two guys uh, like us who tend to differ on quite a lot of things. So, um, yeah, check all that stuff out, and we'll see you next time.